My name is Gina Acosta, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Progressive Grocer. And I am thrilled to be joined today by Dave Zilko, CEO of Skinny Butcher, to talk about everybody's favorite hot category, which is, of course, plant-based foods. So I think we all know that, you know, plant-based in the grocery industry and health and wellness trends are accelerating. And, you know, it's causing consumers to take a second look at their foods, right? At everything they, they buy at the grocery store. So specifically, plant-based foods are super, super red hot and demand for plant-based protein doesn't seem to show any evidence of fading anytime soon. So, you know, the volatile pricing of animal proteins and shortages and, you know, concerns about health and wellness and animal welfare are really, really, really driving grocery shoppers uh, to go for meat-free alternatives. Uh, so Dave is the perfect person to shed light on this trend of consumers demanding plant-based proteins. Dave is a food innovator. He is a driving force behind one of America's most popular fresh salsas, Garden Fresh, Garden Fresh, my favorite salsa. Uh, and now he has his sights set on leveraging uh, the opportunity in plant-based proteins uh, with his crazy crispy, crazy good skinny butcher nuggets, patties, tenders, and so much more. So Dave, welcome. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. I really am. Dave, let me start off by asking you to tell us about your Only in America story. Well, thank you. Um, it, it is kind of an Only in America story. Uh, when I got out of grad school, I returned back to Detroit from where I'm from and decided to start a specialty food company. And like a lot of food entrepreneurs, I did so on a credit card loan. Um, and I'd love to tell you it was my credit card loan, but I was so broke, I got turned down for it. So I turned to my then girlfriend and she must have seen something in me. And she signed for a $2,500 credit card loan. So that's uh, how I got started in the food business. Uh, people ask all the time, I, I did marry her. Uh, we're still, <laughs> still married to this day and uh, two, two beautiful uh, sons. So I really struggled for about 11 years. Uh, what I refer to as my lost decade, probably technically bankrupt. Uh, in fact, let's take probably out of there. <laughs> Made my way to the fancy food show in New York. Uh, this is the summer of 2002 and met another struggling Detroit food entrepreneur and Jack Aronson. So a couple of years before I met him, Jack found himself in the back of a bankrupt 1200 square foot restaurant just outside of Detroit. He's literally taken the bus to work because his car got repossessed. And literally out of desperation, he told me he was just trying to pay his electric bill. He pulls out a five gallon bucket and in 15 minutes is very sure for a shot, makes what is today garden fresh artichoke garlic salsa. So um, it starts to take off in, in local party stores and things of that nature. And after I met him at the Fancy Food Show in New York, he and I came uh, back to Detroit. We had lunch. He told me about his origins and he said, hey, we may really have something here. So he asked me to become his partner. You know, two flunkies from Detroit with a fresh salsa recipe. What could possibly go wrong? Right? <laughs> we're, supposed, we're supposed to be making cars in Detroit. Whoever heard of fresh salsa coming out of Detroit? So Anyway, uh, we were not above still hitting party stores in and around Metro Detroit. Um, then Jack had, had built a plant. Uh, we got our big break when we got into Meyer, then Wegmans, um, and we were kind of off to the races. So we brought in a creative director. His name is Mike Griffin. He's brilliant. He's an artist. Uh, we made him a partner of the company. We really got our branding right. And we really decided that for us to be successful, again, a couple of flunkies from Detroit with a fresh salsa recipe, we absolutely had to be the best product on the market, bar none. So um, before we knew it, improbably, we were the number one brand of fresh salsa in the United States. And we bought a hummus company in Detroit. We actually became the third largest hummus manufacturer in this country. Uh, we bought a tortilla chip company in Grand Rapids. We are the number one tortilla chip in the deli. Uh, we were the ninth leading brand of dips. We did a license and deal with Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Food Group. And our initial goal was to get the company in 10 million in revenue. Um, that happened in about 15 minutes. Before we knew it, we were doing 110 million in revenue. And right. as the company grew, some major, major players kept coming into our space. And we, I remember I, I put together a board and we'd hold board meetings. And I kept saying that, um, you know, if, if we're going to compete in this very crowded sandbox, we absolutely have to be the best product on the market. So um, even when we were the number one brand of fresh sauce in the United States, 
um, producing 85 tons a day. We were still making in five gallon buckets, just like Jack did in the back of this um, uh, bankrupt restaurant just outside of Detroit. So fast forward to 2015, um, uh, we we're producing a million units a week. By this time, we're kind of media darlings. And I got invited to speak in an investment banking conference in New York. Yeah, Marriott Marquis in Times Square. And the guy came after me, happening to be the vice president of mergers and acquisitions for the Campbell Soup Company. And we eventually sold to them in June of 2015. Um, pretty nice day at the office for us. So again, uh, as you said, part of an old America story, very humble origins. Um, but we had quite an adventure um, with my partner, Jack Aronson, and our creative director, Mike Griffin. Um, and uh, that really laid the foundation for what we're doing now. So perfect segue. How did you get into Skinny Butcher? You know, uh, how did Skinny Butcher come about? So after we sold Garden Fresh, Jack went out and bought our old distribution center, um, about a 240,000 square foot building. And one of the things we were also doing at Garden Fresh was high pressure pasteurization. Jack was a real visionary with respect to HPP. So he set up an HPP facility in our own distribution center. Um, then an awful thing happened. He noticed a, a lump on the side of his neck, turned out to be a cancerous tumor. Um, so he asked me to get involved in what he was doing um, as he had a focus on his health. So I did, and his health continued to deteriorate. In fact, we lost him last August, um, but he was really switching to a complete vegan lifestyle. He mm. was unbelievably passionate about it. So when I was with him and our creative director, Mike Griffin, um, I couldn't help but be moved by his passion for a vegan lifestyle, very touched by what he was going through. Um, and he had this incredible facility. And it just struck me that this is a space that we could make a real contribution to. So I remember the exact moment where I came up with the name Skinny Butcher. And then oh, wow. as, as Jack's <laughs> health continued to um, uh, uh, you know, deteriorate, um, he really couldn't be involved in it to that great extent anymore. So it was really me and my creative director, Mike Griffin, who's just brilliant, who have really taken this and developed the brand aesthetic. A lot of people ask us about an agency. We don't have an agency. We do everything in-house, uh, Mike and I do. So it, it really evolved from there. Uh, somewhat, you know, serendipitous, uh, really a combination of what Jack did after we sold Garden Fresh and what he was going through health-wise. Um, and then still recognizing, you know, that this is a place we can make a real contribution in. So obviously launching an entirely new food concept is a very complex undertaking. So how do you even begin to approach that, Dave? So, you know, we really look back at, at our Garden Fresh experience. So uh, the first thing I did when I became partner of Garden Fresh was bring in our creative director, Mike Griffin, who again is just a genuine artist. He's brilliant. Um, and we really got our branding right. And we really focused on the use occasion. I remember a, a, a very pivotal discussion with me, Jack and Mike. We were sitting around a table and, and I said to Jack, Jack, we really need to redo our branding. We're not in the back of a bankrupt restaurant anymore. We really need to professionalize this. And he was saying, well, you know, let's focus on our product attributes. We're high in lycopenes, fat free, 10 calories per serving, all natural. Mike interjected, let's focus on the use occasion. He said, chips and salsa are something that people enjoy. It puts a smile on their face. So we, our internal brand personality at Garden Fresh was we want to be a party in a cup. So our packaging was festive and vibrant and alive. And this was really Mike's work. So um, coupling that with our determination to still make salsa in five gallon buckets, even though we're doing it to the tune of 85 tons a day, um, you know, we really had the best product and we had the best branded product as well. So that's the approach we took to Skinny Butcher, to literally come into a, what is becoming a very crowded sandbox with mm. the best product on the market. And I define best product on the market by meaning we're winning on branding and we're winning on a flavor profile. So our brand aesthetic for Skinny Butcher is designed to put a smile on your face. It's designed to speak to flavor profile. Um, uh, in terms of flavor profile, we, we're importing a, a bamboo fiber from Italy. We're the first ones in this country to do it. We put together a proprietary blend of chicken flavoring that um, we just think is terrific. And then we decided to be um, 
uh, are, are to follow the gold standard of this interest and be pea protein based. So all our items are soy free, but pea protein can have an unpleasant aftertaste. So in the development of this product, product, we really focused on masking agents. So there's no unpleasant aftertaste with our products. So again, our approach was simple, come to market with the best product and define best product by winning on branding and winning on flavor profile. So can you share or talk about the response you've had to date from buyers and retailers? Yeah, we are literally in launch mode right now. I think we're in Safeway Mid-Atlantic, 350 stores. So that's really about it. We got a lot of onboarding coming soon. So what I'm looking for here is a response we're getting from buyers and brokers and in, in the trade, if you will. So mm -hmm. with respect to the brand aesthetic, I, I really could not be more thrilled. Um, I think we've really differentiated ourselves. I, I think everybody else, the, the, pro, the general approach to plant-based protein is either to hit you over the head with the two by four and say, <laughs> this is you know unbelievable how close this is to real animal protein or be, be, be very muted um, and, and, and very serious. So our branding, there's a, there's a certain tension between um, uh, you know, the, the progressive nature of this, this food. We're, har, har, we're housing our logo, Skinny Butcher, and kind of a pop art modern cleaver. It's just fun. And then we've got an animated winking butcher, kind of a retro figure, somebody from the 30s or 40s who your grandmother might have encountered when she was going to her local meat purveyor a couple times a week. So um, we're having fun with it. We're employing a device called the Thought Bubble. Every one of our items, the butcher is saying something different. And this is a way for us to speak to the consumer at the point of sale in a way that a company really can't, but our beloved butcher can. And he's winking at you because um, there's an old joke that says you never trust a skinny butcher. Um, but he's winking at you saying, look, this is so good, even I'm eating it, you can really trust me. And the butcher is the second most trusted individual in the supermarket, uh, right behind the pharmacist. So that was the brand aesthetic we set out to entail, um, to create. And so far, the response has just been great. I mean, it has been universal for buyers and brokers alike, saying, never seen anything like this. This really does put a smile on my face. Um, I think my favorite response was from a, a digital media executive and we had an hour-long zoom call with him and we were getting off the phone everybody at heart stops and he goes look i gotta tell you i gotta tell you, completely unsolicited he goes i'm committed to a flexitarian lifestyle i know it's good for me i know it's good for the environment um but he goes i just hate how all these other brands are plant-based protein brands are leaf this and leaf that he hmm. goes butcher you guys aren't afraid to be what you want to be. You have swagger, braggadocio. He was <laughs> slaps. Um, right. now I, I will admit, I had to call my teenage son and said, hey, th just this slaps, is that good? And he goes, dad, that's cool, roll with it. But um, <laughs> I mean, that is, it's my favorite remark to date, um, but um, it, it's, it's really representative of the response we're getting to the brand aesthetic. So this, our whole approach to branding is we want to develop a relationship with the consumer at the point of sale. We want that butcher winking at you um, right when you're in the frozen grocery aisle, but we also want to carry it through to consumption. And along those lines, I was talking last week with a buyer at a very prominent um, uh, virtual food company who is looking at onboarding us. And we sent her samples and she said, these were just fantastic. She was more importantly though, my five-year-old, this is all he wants to eat now. It's skinny butcher this, skinny butcher that. So, and, and that's really, again, we don't want to take ourselves too seriously. This isn't a somber endeavor. We're not trying to, to hit anybody over there with the two by four. I mean, these are chicken nuggets for crying out loud. They should be fun. They should be something you treat yourself to just as our garden fresh line was. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the response to the brand aesthetic and the flavor profile so far. Again, we're in launch mode, but I right. look for responses we're getting from buyers, brokers, the trade. And it's, I, I'm really, really thrilled by it. So you mentioned virtual. So that's the last thing I actually wanted to talk to you about. Um, Tell us about your virtual restaurant program and it's national and how are you doing that and why? Yeah, so I really became intrigued by the virtual restaurant um, uh, phenomenon probably in January of 2020. I mean, just reading about the Wall Street Journal and following the trade mm -hmm. publications, things like that. And I really thought that our skinny butcher, chicken nuggets, chicken tenders, patties and, and chicken breasts would be very appropriate for this. I kind of looked at what was going on in the QSR space and the hottest thing are all these Southern fried 
chicken uh, wars that are going on with Chick-fil-A and Wendy's and Popeye's and all this. And we had developed a, a chicken breast um, and we came up with a double breading system that we're calling Crazy Crispy. And when you put it on like a pretzel roll and put cheese and everything, it's the texture is phenomenal. The flavor profile is phenomenal. And I really thought this would be a good virtual restaurant concept. So we had an in-house chef. He's terrific. And he and I developed a very simple mainstream menu. But our plate was pretty full with our CPG program. So I started looking for partners. And, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good in this world. But I got introduced to um, uh, Valor Equity Partners in Chicago, who had um, uh, purchased from Let Us Entertain You a majority interest in their Wow Bow concept. And Wow Bow had, I think at one time, uh, 14, 15, 16 brick and mortar um, locations in and around Chicago where Let Us Entertain You Enterprises is, is located. And they started going virtual and they're now north of 600 units operating throughout the United States. So we told them what we we're doing at CPG and I, I was very flattered by their response. They said, this is the best um, plant-based strategy we've seen when on branding, winning a flavor profile. They liked our aesthetic. They really liked how food tasted. So they said we would like to onboard this nascent um, virtual restaurant concept onto their Wow Bow platform. And uh, for me, they kind of had me at hello, very high IQ, but very high EQ as well. I just love them. So we're moving forward with them. And we all our agreements were wrapped up in December. Um, we've got soft locations open in Chicago now, a couple of them. Um, a bunch of people have onboarded. They anticipate having 500 Skinny Butcher virtual restaurants by the end of next year. And I wouldn't bet against them. I really wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So what I like about this from a, a brand perspective, perspective. I think it's a great way for um, uh, consumers to experience our brand who may not come across us in a, um, a retail setting. I think it's a great brand building exercise for us. I think it's a great sampling exercise. And one thing I really want to do with Skinny Butcher, I view it as my responsibility to differentiate ourselves in as many ways as we can from our competitors. And I don't know of any of our competitors who have a national virtual restaurant program underway. And I just love the the symbiotic relationship between what we're doing at CPG and what we can do in the virtual restaurant space. So I kind of think it's breakthrough stuff and I, I'm thrilled to be associated with Keller and these people at Wawa. They're just great people, personally and professionally. Sometimes really better is. than good. <laughs> <laughs> it really quick. is. I mean, you're doing so many innovative breakthrough things, Dave, uh, it sounds like. So tremendous, Thank tremendous luck on your- Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much, Dave, for being here, for talking to us about Skinny Butcher and plant-based foods. And, and Yep. And Thank thanks you. to everyone who joined. Beautiful. Take care. Bye.